Hey friends, it's Amanda here from Fun Hands-On Learning and today we are going to prep all of our preschool hands-on activity trays for the next two weeks. Alright, so I have all of my trays here ready to go and then I have all of the curriculum here as well. If you saw uh, one of my last videos, I showed you how I chose all of the curriculum that we were going to do this week. So now I am ready to just put each activity on a tray and get out all of the little manipulatives and little toys and items that the kids might need to do the activity. And then we will be all set up and ready for the next two weeks. All right, so let's get started. Now I probably have way more activities here and I'll probably prep more activities than we can actually get done. Uh, and that is because preschool, we love to do these hands-on activities and we do a lot of them, but a lot of times preschool is just play too. So we do a lot of play, we do a lot of reading books and other things as well. So, um, so we don't always get to every single activity that I plan, but that's fine. Then I just save that activity for the next two weeks and we get to it when we can, can get to it. I mean, this is preschool. We don't have to make it um, too complicated. And we also don't have to push the kids. So some days, uh, you know, my kids might do want to do three or four hands-on activities and that's awesome and we'll do them all. And then other days I might do one and just be done for the day and want to go do something else and that's totally fine too. So, um, so just be flexible with it when you plan your activities and remember that they are little and let them be little. All right, so let's get into this. Okay, so on this first tray here, I am going to put our Play-Doh mats. We haven't done these in a long, long time. I made these um, in 2017, and uh, back then I made them for a, a child who was little, and now he is in second grade. So um, now I am going to do these with some of my other kids, and I just don't think we've even, I've even done these with them. I know we've used these more as posters with them, um, but I don't think we've done them as Play-Doh mats. So that is what we're gonna do. So really all this tray needs is it needs the, these, and we need to go get some Play-Doh. Okay, so if you've seen my previous videos, then you know I have these four big cabinets in my school room, and I have three of them open right now. I don't have this one open because this is my curriculum one, and I've already picked out all my curriculum, so I don't need that one open. Uh, if you're interested in that one, I showed that one a lot in my last video when I was picking out the curriculum that we're gonna be working on and the activities. Okay, so. For um, today's purposes, I definitely need this cabinet because here you will see this has all of our actual hands-on um, manipulatives and tools. So over here, all of these bins have different manipulatives that we can use. Down here are more like counters and just all sorts of manipulatives that I have acquired over the years. Now, one thing I want to say is that you do not have to have all of this stuff. Um, I know it looks like a lot, but I was a teacher for 10 years before I started homeschooling, and then we've also been homeschooling for nine years. So for 19 years, I have been acquiring these kind of things, and so that's why I have so much. So don't feel like you have to run out to the store and get all of these manipulatives. And in fact, having so many options sometimes makes it hard because I want to use them all, <laughs> and um, and sometimes I like just can't decide or um, because I have so many, uh, I forget what I have and then we, we just end up not using as many. So um, anyways, but yeah, all you really need is you do need letters. So this whole section here is all different letter manipulatives that we use and you'll probably see me pull some of those out as I um, get these trays ready today. And then um, this section, these are all just like counting and just, we use these kind of manipulatives for everything. So there's just little, there's little squares, there's little puzzle pieces, there's those um, counting, connecting uh, squares. I can't think of the name of them. Oh, snap cubes. Snap cubes, in there we have some erasers. Here, these two things are um, little, more little erasers. These are letters that should be up here, but I don't have room for them, so they're stuffed here. I also like to keep around extra little bins because I put the manipulatives in these just little bins for them to grab them out of. So I keep those in here as well. 
um, down here. I actually got a new set of um, clothespin clips, and so uh, I just put them in a bag and threw them in there for now. Uh, I got a, like a really colorful set. I used to have just the regular ones, and um, we were using them actually as chip clips in our kitchen and a bunch of them broke and so I just needed a new set. So there's that. Um, these are a lot of different counters and things that we use. Down here are just more little manipulative. So I like to have this cabinet because I can just go and grab what I need. Also, um, back behind here is the Play-Doh. So I'm gonna have to dig through there to get the Play-Doh out for that activity I was just showing you. And then this cabinet over here these are all of our math things. So I try to keep all of the math type um, manipulatives over here. So uh, as you saw on this cabinet, I had all sorts of letter manipulatives over here. This whole square right here are all number manipulatives here. And then um, up here are more number and counting type manipulative things. Over here are more math kind of manipulatives. I have our... Um, dominoes and I just have like dice and things that we use for math. This whole square over here are all shape manipulatives. So anything we're going to do with geometry and shapes is there. And then here I have like flashcards and all sorts of different things. So I won't go through everything, but I like to have that cabinet ready to go open and ready to pull from as well. because I take things out of there too. Now, something else I do is I have special bins where I store things for certain seasons. So uh, this is our winter bin. And because I have some activities that I am going to be um, prepping today that I want some winter type manipulatives for, I just took this bin out. Now I keep these bins in our storage room. We have um, a really nice storage room in our basement where we store a lot of things. And so I just keep these down there. So whenever I need one, I have like this one, I have a Valentine's Day one um, for February. I have um, Christmas ones and I have just all the different seasons and holidays that you can think of. Um, and I will, I'll show you a clip of where I keep these right now. Okay, so I am in our storage room where we, where I store all of these. And as you can see, this is, you know, Easter and spring, St. Patrick's Day, Valentine's. I have two Valentine's ones. There's the one we're looking for, winter. This one was fall, Thanksgiving, and Halloween. Um, my Christmas, I have so much Christmas. I have like two big Christmas ones. So I keep those with all of our Christmas decorations, which are, uh, we have a room up above our garage that stores that kind of thing. But this is just our storage room, and this is where I stack up these bins. So I'm going to pull out this winter one, and we will look through that. Okay, so I am just going to go ahead and open up this winter bin and just kind of show you. So I have it open, and it's ready to take things out of when I need them. Um, so this just has different winter manipulatives that I might want to use. This is, this bin here is just full of winter type stickers um, and things that we might use. But underneath all of this stuff, there's some winter books that I like to um, read at this time with the kids. Now I'm prepping some things for, um, these activities are going to be prepped for the week after Christmas uh, and the uh, next week, the first week of January. So I definitely want some winter themed things out and I'll probably keep these out for all of January and then I will get out more Valentine's Day type stuff for uh, February. I have a different bin for that. All right, so then um, I just have other little wintry manipulatives in here. These are just little eraser uh, uh, polar bears and I have these little snowflakes, these paper snowflakes, we use those, uh, I love those. Um, just all sorts of things. I have some penguins here. So when, um, when I get to those tr trays, I will uh, take some of this out and show you. Okay, I took the Play-Doh out for this activity and that is all they need for this. So that tray is done. Let's move on to the next one. I'm gonna set up another counting activity. And so um, this counting activity, uh, by the way, I will show these activities in detail in my um, activity videos. So I always do activity videos. If you're new to my channel, you probably don't know, but I do videos where I show you how to do these activities and how we did them. And I usually give you little clips of my students doing them and all that fun stuff. So I'm not getting into any of that this 
in this video. This video is just literally setting up. So this is a counting activity. You really don't need anything else with it, but I am going to get some counters and um, some numbers to make this a little bit more fun. Okay, so in this activity they are counting squares on cards, so I got out these little connecting squares, they're called snap cubes, and I got out one of my little uh, trinket containers, so they're in there, and then I also got out numbers that they can match after they do the activity. Now for this specific activity, you don't need any of this extra stuff, but you know me, if you've watched any of my videos, I like to make everything more interactive. So I also decided to take out these, uh, I'm going to have them use these beanbag numbers when they do the activity. So and you'll see this in a, a separate video. So this tray is done and I just kind of put all of this together and we can move on. Okay, we're going to get together one of our winter themed activities. This is an activity for toddlers. It is kind of interactive. They have to match up the pieces. So they are learning winter themed words and they have to match them up. I can go over this activity in a different video, but what I want to do um, for this is I need some alphabet letters for these cards and I also want to get um, a representation of all of these pictures. letters and since this activity is going to be done with my two-year-old and he's just a toddler uh, I got some big alphabet manipulatives here these are little blocks you know that you can stick together but they have letters on them and so I've got those these are the only letters we need for this activity so that's good and then I got all my rep representations I have my snowflake my penguin my polar bear and then I don't have a hat toy per se um, but I have a hat on this stamp and we're not going to actually use the stamp but we're going to use it as our picture I think otherwise I can go get a real hat but I don't want anything super big so I think that's it I think this tray is done we're going to move on to the next one Okay, so now I'm going to get together this color activity. It's orange picture train and they are going to be working on the color orange. Okay, so for this activity I decided on some orange play-doh. I have a fun idea I'm going to have them do with this activity. And so um, you'll just have to stay tuned in another video to see what we do with this. But this tray is done. Okay, let's set up an alphabet activity. This activity works on the alphabet and it is also winter themed. So it is perfect. Um, let me get this going. Okay, so what I did is I chose which mats I want to use. These are the harder mats. These are the easier mats. So I'm going to put the easier mats away because my kids um, love their alphabet and they do pretty well. So we want to work on a little bit harder of a skill, which is going to be matching lowercase to uppercase. So let me sort these cards because somehow they got all out of order.
Okay, so for this activity, um, you really just need the cards that come with it. I took out a little bin um, because I'm going to have the cards sitting in the bin for them to take out. And I realized as I was putting this activity together that I am missing some of the alphabet cards. I have all the picture cards, but I'm missing some of the alphabet cards. And I somehow in the back of my brain kind of remember a long time ago us taking some of the alphabet cards out to do something with the, oh wait here's some extras okay but i'm still missing i think i'm missing the vowels i think we took the vowels out to do some other project with them and i never put them back in here my bad so what i'm gonna have to do is i'm gonna have to go print out um I'm, uh, later on not right now but um, i'm gonna have to print out some more cards for this activity and laminate them and get them ready to go uh, and that's kind of the nice part about having these activities downloaded on your computer is that if you ever need anything more or you ever want to print out another one, I mean, you can print out as many as you want, whenever you want. So that's what I'm going to go back and do is I'm going to print out my vowels because I'm missing my vowels. But anyways, so I just have a little um, bin here for them to, to pull out their cards. And then um, I'm adding into this activity some uh, letter manipulative. So I took this one out and I want them to use this. So this activity is ready to go. Take that back. This activity is not ready to go. I'm gonna have to print out some vowel cards, but other than that, this activity is ready to go. Okay, this activity is called snow globe shape sorting. And it is a kindergarten activity because they are supposed to sort the shapes by the number of sides. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a preschool activity and we're just going to sort the shapes. I can't even say that. Sort the shapes by what they are. Circle, square, triangle, etc. But I need to get some shape manipulatives to do that. Okay, this little bag here has shapes in it, so I'm just going to pull out the ones we're going to sort. So we're going to sort squares. I just need one of each. A circle. Oh no, that's right. A rectangle, a circle, a square. Um, a hexagon. And I need a triangle. A triangle. And I think that's all we're going to sort. Okay, so I just need one of each of those and then um, our snow globes and then we will sort this. So that activity is ready to go. Okay, these are from my hands-on to learn preschool curriculum and I don't know, a week or two ago, I got the funny, fun idea to cut them up. They are actually, they actually come together like this as well, all one page. I decided to cut them up because what I'm going to have them do is I'm going to have the headers here. So I'm going to have two, like I'm going to give them two numbers. So like the number two and the number four or whatever, or the number two and the number five. To make it harder, I could give them the number two and the number three. But anyways, and then I'm going to give them the cards and then they have to find the ones that have two and they're going to sort them. But um, besides that, they're going to use manipulatives to count it out. So I'm going to use winter theme manipulatives. Uh, for them to count it out because it's, you know, winter and I have them. So let me pick those. Okay, I got some numbers for them to use and so this tray is done. Okay, we have an alphabet activity. I really don't need anything to use with this because you can just use it right out of the package. But knowing me, I'm gonna go get some uh, little things that they can use to make it more fun. All right, so for this activity, I took out only the letters that are in their names. So I have three kids that are gonna be doing this activity. They are Seth, Paul, and Peter. And so these are all the letters that are in their names. And so when they go to do the activity, they're only going to do the letters that are in their names. That way I pared this activity down. It's not gonna take forever. And I kind of have um, an idea of what letters we're gonna focus on for this activity. Uh, so all the other letters I left in here, I took out all the pieces that they would need to do those letters that are in their names. And then I also grabbed out a letter manipulative set. These are magnet letters. 
And so this is gonna go with this activity, and this activity is ready to go. By the way, if you are interested in seeing all of these activities, I do activity videos on my channel, so be on the lookout because you will see exactly how we do these activities. I share them, uh, I share the directions, and uh, you even get to see my kiddos working on them. All right, this activity I am not even gonna put on a tray, I'm just gonna put it on this. This is a pocket chart, it stands up, and they're gonna do this activity just matching up alphabet cards on this pocket chart. It's super simple, but I just wanna have it in my arsenal, so if I wanna pull out something super, super simple and have them sort cards on a pocket chart, it's ready to go. Okay, this is an old activity that I created years ago. It is filling in missing letters in alphabet order. It was a skill that I figured would be a good one to work on this week. And I'm really not gonna do anything super fancy with this, except I'm going to pair it up with some of these jumbo um, magnetic letters. So I think that might be fun. I tested it out and they fit in the square. So, because um, sometimes these jumbo ones don't work really well. Sorry guys, I'm messing with my camera. Uh, some of these jumbo letters don't always work really well with all of our activities because they're so big, they don't fit. Um, but they do fit in these, these kind of bigger squares. So I'm gonna pair it up with these and this activity is ready to go. Okay, we are gonna do our number sticks. I know I have already put together a lot of counting activities, but um, it's always awesome to reinforce counting, especially with little ones, especially since we're gonna be dealing with two and three year olds um, and then a special needs child. Reinforcing counting and alphabet is always a go-to. So I'm gonna do one more counting activity for them and it's gonna be our number sticks. So what I want for this activity is, again, I need Play-Doh. Um, as you notice, I use Play-Doh a lot or at least this uh, these next two weeks we're gonna be using Play-Doh a lot. But I need Play-Doh and then I also uh, need some counting manipulative. Okay, I got my Play-Doh ready to go and then I decided since we're gonna stick with kind of our wintry theme. We're gonna use these cute little polar bears as our manipulatives. I just need 10, so I'll count those out real quick. Okay, this tray is done and it is ready to go. All right, this is the last tray I'm gonna set up today. These are color puzzles from, I believe, yeah, they're my vocabulary for preschool curriculum. Um, they work on color vocabulary words, but it also just works on colors. So um, I am going to have them put together these puzzles and then I'm gonna pair it up with some color manipulatives. Okay, here's an example of me getting something in my head. I went in my cabinet to get some manipulatives that had all the different colors so they could match them up. Uh, and I saw this and I thought, oh, we'll just use this toy and then we will use them with these cards. So this toy, um, they, sort, they sort the fruit by the different colors but it does not have blue, so it has like purple, yellow, red, orange, uh, green. So I am going to, so when we use these cards, we'll just practice those colors. So we'll do the green puzzle and the purple and the yellow and the red. I mean, we could do all the puzzles actually if we wanted to, but I'm gonna pair it up with these. So after we um, sort them, we'll do the puzzles and then they have to find the right color and match it to the puzzle. So there we go. This activity is ready to go. Okay, I had a couple other activities pulled out, but I decided I'm not going to do these. I just had one, well, this was actually the color puzzles. So I just had one, two, three, four activities that I had pulled out that I decided we're just not gonna do. I think I have enough trays here. So I'm just gonna put these back really quick. Okay guys, all my trays are ready to go, so I am officially done. Now I keep them on this top row here on this shelf in um, the cabinet, and usually they fit, sometimes they don't, but usually they fit. Everything this time fit except for those jumbo uh, letters. 
I could not fit those in there, but uh, I know which activity I want to use those with, so I will just um, pull those out when we're ready to use it. Otherwise, all of those activities you saw me um, put together, all those trays, all fit in here. Now, the reason I keep them in here is because now a lot of times you might see other teachers, uh, especially preschool teachers, they will have shelves that they keep their activities on and they're laid out nicely. But um, since I'm a homeschool mom, I just keep them in the cabinet because I have like a one-year-old and other little ones. I'll be getting into them at all times if I had them just sitting out on a shelf and my one-year-old would be just having so much fun eating Play-Doh, right? Um, so yeah, I, I keep them in a cabinet closed up so that way I can just take them out when I need them and I don't have little kids getting into them. Um, but yeah, when I was a um, school teacher and I was consistently supervising all of the kids, then I would keep things out on shelves and that was fine. So either way you want to do it, just a tip there uh, in case you have little ones who might get into things. Cabinets, closed cabinets are always a good option um, for you. Now the other thing is um, I do also want to set up our sensory bin with an activity for the next two weeks and um, I have not done that yet, but that would be the only thing that I would still want to do. Okay, so thank you friends so much for watching. We will see you in the next video. If you are looking for links to activities or anything else you saw in this video, um, take a look at my description box. I usually link uh, things there and we will see you next time. Bye.